this is Oncorhynchus clarksi lewisi, named after Lewis and Clark, who first encountered the West Slope cutthroat trout. Uh, they encountered them near Great Falls, Montana, on the Missouri River. And as you can see, they have that distinctive cutthroat, that red slash. Uh, and what differentiates the West Slope from a lot of other cutthroats is uh, the spotting down the back and near the tail is a little bit more pronounced. It's even more pronounced on this population of West Slope cutthroats that live in the Methow uh, River drainage. Um, and I'll talk more about that. Uh, cutthroats are pretty easy to separate from rainbow trout because if you look from the base of their caudal tail all the way up to their pelvic or caudal fin all the way up to their pelvic fin, there's almost no spotting across the lower half of the fish. And there's also almost no spotting directly on top of the head. It's just a green head. They have that distinctive cutthroat, and then uh, this male is still a little bit flush red. Um, since they spawn very late in this stream, as late as August and even early September here, because uh, the water temps didn't get very hot this year. Uh, so they have that very distinctive sp uh, spotting on the tail. Uh, if, actually, if you go and look at West Slope cutthroats in the eastern portions of their range, uh, in the core of their range in Idaho and Montana, um, that spotting is way less pronounced, but there's a couple disjunct populations um, in the Chelan, Methow Valley area in Washington and on the John Day River area in Oregon and a few isolated populations in British Columbia that have a little bit more pronounced spotting um, down the back, a little bit darker uh, and just a little bit more obvious. It's much more similar to say coast, coastal cutthroat. Absolutely beautiful fish. fish has the classic pattern of no spotting on the top of the head and on that line from the fin here in the back all the way up to the pectoral no spotting down here in an arc and you will find that pattern on all west slope cutthroats um, all the way to the east side of the continental divide in Montana and throughout Idaho which is interesting because most of the other cutthroat subspecies have diversified into a variety of colors and shapes and morphologies, but not West Slope, despite having the widest geographic range of any of these subspecies. And the hypothesis behind this is that the reason that exists, this uniformity, even in the disjunct populations in, in Washington, Oregon and British Columbia is that Lake Missoula periodically flooded um, when the giant ice dam broke near Clark Fork, Idaho and sent thousands of these West Slope cutthroats back out across the Columbia Basin which 
probably, and this happened over and over again, which led to a mixing of, a, of the genes constantly of these West Slope cutthroats. And this one's got some cool kind of uh, melanism there on the back of it. Beautiful fish. Let's get him back on his way. See you later, buddy. fish for this small stream you see here beautiful they don't get much bigger in this stream beautiful buck you get him back in the water and on his way Their native range, West Slope cutthroat trout have declined dramatically. This is primarily due to habitat loss and introduction of invasive trout species such as brown trout and rainbow trout. Even more damaging to these pure West Slope cutthroat populations has been the introduction of coastal rainbows or coastal and McLeod rainbow trout, hatchery trout, rainbow trout into their streams. These species can readily hybridize uh, resulting in introgression. Introgression is where the genes of one species makes its way into another until it essentially wipes them out. Now in Montana this has been the case so much to the point that the original place that West Slope cutthroat trout were described by Lewis and Clark and on the Great Falls um, in central Montana they're no longer present there. They have been uh, extirpated from that section of the river. In fact West Slope cutthroat trout now only occupy 2.5% of their original range in Montana. They still have strongholds in northern Idaho, and remarkably, they're doing fairly well in their sort of disjunct populations, like here in the Methow Valley, like on Boulder Creek behind me, and also in the John Day area. The reason for that is, is this population, or these populations of cutthroat co-evolved with Columbia River red band trout, which I featured in my first native trout video, which I'll put a link to at the end of this video. And because of that co-evolution and preferences for different spawning habitats and timing, the two species uh, do not readily mix here. However, elsewhere in their range, with the introduction of coastal uh, rainbow trout, they have hybridized widely, and we've seen a dramatic decline in West Slope cutthroat trout. Today, behind me, you can see Boulder Creek Falls. Above those falls, there's the fish I was catching today are pure West Slope cutthroat trout. Uh, Columbia River red bands, the anadromous forms, cano cannot go up past these falls. It's a, it's a barrier to their passage. And because of that, those fish up there are, truly are uh, a remarkable and special fish. So be sure to hit that like button if you're enjoying these native trout series and hit that subscribe button too to keep up to date with the latest content that I'm producing. I've got a ton of trips planned uh, to keep charging forward on this native trout project that I've started on. I've got a few, few fish to chase this winter and over the next summer and for years to come. Hope you guys have a good one. Get out there, get in the mountains, catch some trout, enjoy the beauty. See you next time.